Hello everyone, it's Ben here and today we're looking at an IELTS Task 2 essay. So without further ado, let's look at the question. Some cities have vehicle-free days when private cars, trucks and motorcycles are banned from the city centre. People are encouraged to use public transportation such as buses, taxis and metro, uh, the metro metros on vehicle-free days. To what extent do you think the advantages of this outweigh the disadvantages? So in a nutshell, good things and bad things about vehicle-free days. What first comes to mind? Well, the environment. And all the fears that we have about um, existential crises like climate change. So at this point of the video, what I usually do is give you a chance to read the essay. I don't want to read it to begin with because I don't want to emphasize particular things with my voice. I'll give you a chance to pause the video and read the essay. Obviously, it's easier to do if you're using a, uh, a device with a large screen. Even on your phone, I hope it will be possible. So if this is the first slide, if you want to pause it now, I'll give you a chance. Moving on, this is the second. Moving on, this is the third. And lastly, this is the fourth and final one for the essay. But of course, you should look at the IELTS Test 2 writing band descriptors available to everyone from the IELTS website, which anyone can access. As I always remind you, public is people, people is you and me, we can all access this document with a quick Google search. These are the higher bands. My apologies, I know it will be very small text if you're using your phone screen. If you can, read it and try and think what kind of score the essay would get. These are the higher bands and these are the lower ones. Now, I'll look at the essay and I'll tell you what scores I would give it, but we'll look at the essay first. So, to begin with, a large number of cities have developed vehicle-free days when any sorts of private vehicles, such as cars, trucks and motorcycles, are not allowed in the city centre. On these particular days, public transportation, which includes buses, taxis and metro, is recommended to the inhabitants. Although this change can lead to some negative effects, I believe that there are more positive effects. I'll start by thinking about the style. Any sort, sort more like informal speaking style, all types, slightly more formal. Any errors? Well, recommended to the inhabitants. Of cities, I guess. Of urban areas or of uh, metropolitan areas. Metropolitan means very urban. And any extra improvements I would make? Not allowed in the city center. Well, we're talking about private vehicles.
The language was fine, but maybe I'll just try and use some fancier language. I'm prohibited from entering the city centre. On these particular days, public transportation, which includes buses, taxis, and metro. Well, we usually say the metro, like the subway. Is, because transportation is uncountable, is recommended to the inhabitants. Again, of urban areas. I know it's kind of suggested because we're talking about city centre, but we haven't really said cities before. Although this change can lead to some negative effects, I believe that there are more positive effects. It's okay, we can make it a bit better though. Vehicle free days, government policy. So al although such a policy, like this kind of policy, we could say could, like if it were implemented, but can, as in it can based on other cities that have done it, so both are fine. It can lead to some negative effects. Well, we usually say have some negative effects, but it's fine. I believe that there are more positive effects than negative effects. Well, that could be a bit better. I believe that these, so these negative effects, are offset, you know, outweighed, counterbalanced, or counterbalanced by the benefits. Again, the writing was not bad. I'm just trying to level it up a bit. Moving on to the body paragraphs, there are two main drawbacks of having vehicle free days. Yeah, fine. Pretty clear what the paragraph is going to say based on that. It's true that majority of people favor using their private vehicles on regular days, but by prohibiting the use of private automobiles in the city, many people would find it more inconvenient to get to their destinations in the city center, such as workplaces or schools. Get phrases are quite informal. I'm going to change that to reach. For errors, we don't say majority of, we say the majority of. And an issue I have when I read this, if you say by prohibiting the use of vehicles, many people would find it more inconvenient. It kind of suggests that the people who find it inconvenient are also the people who are prohibiting it, which is not true. It's the prohibition of them by the government. So I'm going to change that because it's affecting the, uh, the cohesion. It's affecting my understanding, and my ability to smoothly um, read this essay and effortlessly read it and follow the flow of it. But let's say my apologies, semicolon, so taking a, a breather, but still kind of directly connected to the previous part. But if the use of private automobiles in the city were banned by the government, Why am I using were? Well, it's the second conditional grammar. If you don't know, you can look it up. Second conditional grammar. And it uses something called the subjunctive mood. Many people would find it more inconvenient to reach their destinations in the city center, such as workplaces or schools. Most of this is, is fine now, yeah. So, second conditional if, would, and the third thing, kind of similar to the past simple, but not exactly the same subjunctive mood. So, again, if this were done, passive there, if this were done, 
this would be the consequence. So trying to show off that I can use lots of different kinds of grammar. Moving on, this would put additional stress on people. Put additional strain on people would be a bit more natural. But it's um, not big enough that I'm going to change it. Not big enough an issue. Don't ever write big, by the way. It's not, uh, it's not an academic word. It's a speaking word. Not significant enough for me to want to change it. This would put additional strain on people who are working or studying hard for their lives. For their lives is a little bit odd. I don't really understand it. To improve their lives. Good expression instead of lives, life chances. Life chances, general opportunities you have in life. Like to get a good job and make money and that kind of thing. Next part, a little bit awkward, a little bit clunky, which is not an ideal phenomenon. Again, I don't really like this word phenomenon because it's often overused and misused, which would not be an ideal situation to find ourselves in. But um, again, it's wood here, so I'm just going to keep it the same, which would not would not be an situation, would not be an ideal situation for us. Sorry, a little bit messy there, but it says uh, to imp studying hard or working hard to improve their life chances, which would not, sorry, I'm making it even messier, which would not be an ideal situation. Hope that's clear. Furthermore, banning the use of private trucks, cars and motorcycles would result in no tax acquired from parking in the city centre. Therefore, the governments would have to obtain more tax from the citizens. <coughs> Excuse me. Got the adverb. Therefore. But it's not connected with a conjunction. Need to change this. So... And, comma, therefore, comma, so and, as a consequence, and hence the governments. And as a result of this, and therefore, the government, and we can say governments around the world would know the, but if we're talking about our country, the government, the state, the government of our country, the government would have to obtain more tax from the citizens. Yeah, it's pretty good. You could say something like levy more tax um, or impose higher taxes, but it's very clear, you know, obtain more tax, tax being acquired. I think it's, it's pretty good, to be honest. And the last sentence, this means that the citizens would live inconvenient lives and pay additional tax due to this change. Yeah, it's, it's pretty good, I think. I suppose more inconvenient lives is the one thing I would most urgently change. So moving on. On the other hand, there are several benefits of having vehicle-free days. First of all, it's clear that public transportation is environmentally friendly compared to private vehicles. Yes, it is. So lower carbon emissions, smaller carbon footprint, more sustainable transport. This is because the private automobiles produce outrageous amounts of greenhouse gases. Outrageous seems a little bit more like speaking style, but I'm not going to change it because it's still a less common word that I haven't seen much. And I like to see less common words. It's not too informal. It's just a little bit informal. And since they're used individually, so private vehicles, this enhances the effect thus making them the main reason for climate change. Well, thus making them as part of the same sentence. I mean, are they the main reason? Automobiles more than planes? 
aircraft, more than factories? Are they the main reason? I don't know. I mean, I'd have to check the research, but I don't, I don't imagine that the emissions would um, be greater than those made by uh, industry, you know, factories and plants. Well, question mark anyway. Um, okay, so a few things I might change. Private vehicles, private automobiles, very similar. There's two things mentioned. So I'm just going to say the second one, the latter. The latter produce outrageous amounts of greenhouse gases and since they're used individually, this enhances the effect. Yeah, maybe exacerbates the effect, thus making them the main reason. Uh, I'm going to change it. A significant contributor to. To climate change. We don't say the climate change. We just say climate change. We just say global warming. We do say the greenhouse effect because grammatically it's like the effect of a greenhouse. If you understand the, the science. Moving on. In opposition, public transportation such as trains, buses and taxis produce much less greenhouse gases and they're able to take up many people at once, meaning that even less harmful gases are produced to lessen the effects of global warming. In opposition isn't quite right, has a different meaning. If you're in, oppos in opposition to a government policy, it means you oppose it, you don't support it. So I'll do something else. In contrast, conversely, something like that. On the other hand, well, we've got that already, so I won't use that one. Conversely, public transportation, such as trains, buses and taxis, produce much less greenhouse gases. Yeah, I mean... Less is usually with uncountable nouns, less gas. Um, I might be tempted to say lower emissions, like lower levels of carbon emissions. But let's move on. Even less harmful gases are produced to lessen the effects of global warming. Let's make it a little bit better. So certain modes of public transportation, if we want to talk about specific ones, we can say methods, modes, means, means of public transportation. So conversely, certain modes of public transportation, such as trains, buses and taxis, produce much lower volumes of because it's talking about gases uh, we can talk about the volume like the volume of a liquid or gas uh, as a kind of measurement unit uh, sorry no there's a, a unit uh, yeah there's a unit sorry yeah volume much lower volumes of greenhouse gases and they are able to take up well take up isn't quite right Take up is when you start to do something like a hobby, like my grandfather took up golf recently. So take, um, but transport might be slightly better. They're able to transport many people at once, meaning that even less harmful gases are produced. No real need for even, is there? And again, um, emissions are reduced might be slightly better to lessen the effects of global warming well when you talk about global warming you're talking about the 
Earth's temperature gradually increasing. I say gradually, but getting faster and faster, unfortunately. So we have to slow that down um, and eventually stop it so that the Earth's temperature doesn't, de doesn't keep increasing. But um, if you lessen the impact of global warming, you kind of deal with the problems that global warming causes. What you want to do is avoid global warming occurring uh, to a point at which it, it does have severe negative impacts on the world. So which ultimately decelerates that slows down, that means accelerate, make faster car, you accelerate, you um, use the accelerator to go faster, decelerate, make slower. But for some reason, I've spelt it completely incorrectly, because I'm still learning to talk and write at the same time. Decelerates, so rates kind of the speeds d you know down so uh, make the the speed of change go down just check i've got that all right no more typos able to transport many people at once meaning that less harmful gases are produced which ultimately de uh, decelerates global warming so decreases the rate of global warming moving on what's more the city center would be more comfortable for people what does more comfortable mean? A more pleasant environment, you know, cleaner air, I suppose. Since there would not be any traffic and harmful gases produced everywhere on roads, inhabitants would feel safer and feel like the city is less polluted than before. Oh, that's pretty nice. Maybe uh, I'll change the last part to have a higher quality of life. Because that's the ultimate consequences in it. That's the ultimate result we're concerned about. Breathing cleaner air, you're happier and healthier. Your quality of life is going to... In conclusion, there are arguments for both advantages and disadvantages. Let's change that right away. I don't really get that. Just there are both advantages and disadvantages of this development of banning something. Banning something's not really development unless it's already happened. It's a policy, either a policy idea or policy proposal or a policy that has actually come into effect and changed things. So this policy, government policy, of banning private vehicles from the city centre, although there were some drawbacks that people would experience, I believe that the benefits from this change outweigh those cons. Let's just keep it the same, would, would outweigh, and I can't say cons to negative, negative aspects. I can't say cons because it's, it's much too informal, pros and cons. And we don't tend to separate them anyway. We usually say pros and cons together. There are both pros and cons of uh, mixed sex classes. So boys and girls studying together, good things and bad things. We don't say one con is, we say one positive aspect is, or speaking one good thing is, one benefit is, that kind of thing. We don't say one pro is, we don't say one con is. Okay, so what did I give this?
I was a little bit generous with this. I gave it 7.5. And for each part, task response, I gave it 8. Actually, when I when I graded it, I kind of thought 8 minus it's a high 7 or low 8. But I was uh, maybe slightly generous and gave it 8. Coherence and cohesion. That's the next one, isn't it? I gave it uh, eight. Vocabulary, lexical resource is what it actually says. Lexical resource, I gave seven. And grammar, I gave eight. So 7.5 overall. Why? Sufficiently addresses all parts of the task. For eight, I thought so. Well-developed response, relevant, extended, supported ideas. I thought so. Talks about the environment at length, about emissions, and how public transport means we're thinking about mass transit, which means carrying many people in one vehicle. Uh, I, it could have used slightly better words, like volumes of greenhouse gases, but we're not talking about words. Words is why I gave it seven. We're talking about the uh, the task achievement. Next one, coherence and cohesion. Sequences, information and ideas. Logically, yes. All aspects of cohesion. Well, yeah, I thought so. Paragraphing sufficiently and appropriately. Yeah, I thought so. There was... Um, just about long enough introduction and conclusion. I would suggest that there were some issues in that the conclusion doesn't restate the main points. So drawbacks people would experience briefly restate what those are. The benefits, you know, cleaner air, more pleasant environments. What are they? Just briefly restate them in a very, very short way. That would have made it slightly better. Another issue is... This is actually for six. Uses cohesive devices effectively, but cohesion within and or between sentences. Uh, so not at the start of paragraphs. Maybe faulty or mechanical. Um, occasionally it was faulty, actually. Like here. We talked about this issue, it seems like the people inconvenienced are the people causing the inconvenience, which is a bit confusing. But there were minor slips and they were very bold, adventurous choices that didn't work out perfectly. But overall, they made a really uh, linguistically interesting essay that was good to, to read. So it might be slightly generous to give it the eight, but I, I honestly thought it did all these things well enough to, to get the eight. And I'm not a generous person. I'm a bit mean, usually. So if I give it eight, it must be eight. Lexical resource. We've talked about how some of it wasn't quite right. Awareness of style with the use of words like con, which is too informal. It fails a bit. But it wasn't often enough for me to be too picky about that. I thought the use of collocation, words that go together, was generally um, pretty good, to be honest. I thought vocabulary was sufficient with some flexibility and precision, but I definitely don't think it was native level or close to native level, which would just be a little bit more precise and a little bit wider range of vocabulary. Lastly, grammar, wide range of structures, yes, trying lots of different things. Lots of complex structures, uh, very, very fast for examples, although there are, I believe, very long sentences here. Look how all, all of this is just one sentence. Although, you know, this bit, this bit was got wrong. It was just a minor slip. I think it was uh, a silly mistake. Um, it was 
generally very good since there would not inhabitants would making lots of long complex sentences again here I didn't get it perfect with the word choice but again making long interesting sentences this is all kind of one sentence isn't it so I was pretty impressed uh, to be honest it might have been a slightly generous eight again I think it's low eight or high seven kind of on the border you know between these two but I thought the error frequency was very low majority of sentences are error free and has a wide range of structures very occasional errors or inappropriacies you can see just scanning through it there aren't too many changes because um the black ones aren't mistakes they're just ideas for improvements with the grammar or language in terms in terms of actual grammatical mistakes there aren't many to be honest it's more things with like word choice take up isn't they're not the right words to use in opposition it's it's kind of cohesive a cohesive device that's incorrectly used the wrong words so it's related to vocabulary too as well as cohesion again the word choice could be better but it's not really a grammatical problem so again it might be slightly generous and i kind of think maybe especially for cohesion and coherence it could be seven but i didn't worry about it too much because regardless of whether it's seven or eight the final score would still be the same so maybe that's part of the reason i was slightly more generous anyway that's all from me thank you as always for listening and watching bye bye